Welcome to this message. This is one of the powerful messages that you have not heard before. And I believe that it, as you follow Apostle Jesus Shama, this 2024, your life will never remain the same. Believe on it and act, and you will see the hand of God upon your life. If you have not subscribed to this channel too soon, God bless you. I tell you, I have still not found a reason to stop tithing. I have examined the thoughts across boards. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30. The reason why people argue about tithe is number one, because they think tithe is about money. Tithe is not about money. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. This has nothing to do with a dispensation. This is an ordinance. Let me submit to you. There are two reasons why I think the tithe issue has become a controversy in the body of Christ. Number one, and is because of the way we men of God drum it. We drum it because we need the money and because there have been a, a lot of misuse and extravagance with God's money. People have played all kinds of games with God's money at the expense of people's sacrifices. And not everybody in church, uh, people, God's people are not dummies. When they watch and they see that the value you are, pro you are producing does not match the kind of affluence and extravagance you are communicating, someone will be sensitive enough to ask questions. And because a tithe is a tenth portion, there is nothing to hide about tithe. Tithe, financially speaking, is a tenth portion of what you bring. And let me tell you, if that is combined from faithful people, it is a lot. Bankers, am I right? It is a lot. What is there to hide? Tithe was supposed to be a mechanism. Listen to me. According to scripture, the tithe was supposed to be a mechanism to cater for priesthood and to cater for the building of the Lord's house. To cater for priesthood. Remember, there was a time when the children of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, are we Bible students, that while they were boiling the meat, they were given the privilege of using a fork to pick without looking. The scene there became when they now started opening the whole pot and they would look for the choice part of the meat and use it. And God said, no, this is not. I gave you the privilege to at least pick something. Now, there are all kinds of policies and principles. I'm not going into the legalities of ministries and Christian organizations and all of that. But I can tell you it is because of the annoyance of people from the carelessness, the recklessness, and the misuse of God's money. This is what has led people into this anger that has evolved into this campaign. There are a few people who have intelligently studied and based on their conclusion, they feel this is not needed. But I tell you, the root of most of this tight problem has come because of an, a, a level of integrity that has not been effectively communicated. Are we together? But I submit to you, and as far as it is within the jurisdiction of this spiritual family, I can tell you, be a faithful tither. Tight is a tenth portion, according to scripture, one tenth. Now, I know that a lot of people have thought to bring 50% of your tithe, 80% of your tithe. The Bible does not say that. If God tells you personally, it is a personalized dealing. Don't create a doctrine out of it and punish people. Within the boundary of contentment and vision, 10% of what God's people bring should be sufficient to run the activities of the ministry within the boundary of contentment, vision, and integrity. Are we learning? Yes, sir. So let me encourage you, based on the truth of scripture I have learned, based on the experience of veterans who have been, who have truly prospered by God, I can tell you, do not stop tithing. If you don't have the revelation, settle down and get the revelation. Don't do it religiously. But as far as this house is concerned, as a ministry, we are a tithing ministry. As an individual, I'm a tithing person. And I can tell you, tithe is not about money. It is called the law of open heavens. According to Malachi chapter 3, when you begin to read from verse 8, it says, will a man rob God? It says, but ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. So the Bible is talking about robbery here. It says, ye are cursed with a curse. This is not the curse of the law. No. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. It says, bring ye how many? All the tithes 
into my storehouse. In another series, we'll have the time to discuss what storehouse is. Because there are three platforms that qualify to be called a storehouse. In fact, I think I should just say it in one minute. Number one, a storehouse means your place of primary spiritual nourishment. It qualifies. It is the first biblical platform that is called a storehouse. Your place of primary spiritual nourishment. Number two, a storehouse also refers to any ministry that is committed to the salvation of souls and the transformation of lives. These two things must be there. If it is not actively committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints, it does not qualify to be called a storehouse. It's an uncomfortable truth, but this is the truth. And then number three, the storehouse can also by extension refer to an individual, a minister who is committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints. There are conditions where an individual can be regarded as a storehouse. These are the three. Just take it like this for now. In another series, as God grants us grace, we'll open deeper into this. I just didn't want to leave that gray area. But it says, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here with said the Lord. There are seven prophetic blessings according to scripture here that follow the title. Number one, God will open for you the windows of heaven. Number two, you will, you will pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Fathers like Kenneth Copeland will call it concepts, insights, and ideas. Next verse, it says, I will rebuke the devourer. The third, the devourer is a waster that comes to bring all kinds of waste on legal basis to your life. Number four, it says he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Your ground is anywhere you plant. Can be your business, can be your life. And then number five, it says neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. Number six, it says you shall be called, you shall be a delightsome land. Please go to, um, all nations shall call you blessed, verse 12. And ye shall be a delightsome land. Seven prophetic blessings according to scripture. When Jesus was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees for their being hypocritical, he did not negate the subject of tithing. He said, you tithe and you do all of these things and you negate the weightier matter. So Jesus identified this as part of the things that the believers should know. Tithe is very important. Number three. So number one is the law of absolute surrender. Number two is the law of the tithe. And then number three is called the law of giving. You can put in bracket the law of seed time and harvest. These are the three spiritual laws principally. Now under the law of seed time and harvest, there are so many, I don't want to run into it this night. But then it's sufficient for you to know that the law of giving, the law of seed time and harvest is a foundational spiritual law. Are we together now? Very important. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, we read it earlier. Here's what it says. It says, give. And it shall be given unto you. So the Bible states clearly here that when you give, it shall be given unto you. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, we're rushing for time. This was Noah after the flood. And a proclamation came from heaven on account of the sacrifice that he read. It says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, Day and night shall not cease. This is an ordinance that will last while the earth remains. That means anytime you don't find the earth, stop obeying the law. But provided you can see the earth, you should know the law is in force. What is seed time and harvest? It means that the economic system of the kingdom runs on the principle of seed time and harvest, spiritually speaking. That anything you do not have, it is because you did not plant the seed for it. And seed here does not mean money. If you want a harvest of kindness, sow the seed of kindness. If you want, there are seeds and their corresponding harvests. Honor, listen carefully, honor is the seed for a harvest called access. Good understanding is the seed for a harvest called favor. Diligence, listen carefully, is the seed for what we call lifting. So it is about understanding seeds and harvest. A question is the seed for an answer. Knowledge and wisdom are the keys for enlightenment. Are we together now? Yes. There are different kinds of giving. The Bible now switches to let us know that giving and receiving is sowing and reaping. That in this kingdom, every time you give, you are a farmer 
who is sowing. Second Corinthians chapter 9. We'll start from verse 6. So we've identified the fact that the Bible talks about giving and receiving. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Go ahead, 7. It says, every man, here is the condition, and this is the cure for manipulation and control in the church. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God, by reason of your sowing, have you seen that he's talking about sowing and reaping? Now he turns to giving and receiving. So in the kingdom, one of the ways that we sow is by giving. One of the ways that we reap is by receiving. He says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Can I be honest with you? Ask anybody who God has lifted in the kingdom. If you do not engage the law of giving and receiving, there is a limit. In fact, you may not be able to rise to certain realms. Now, there are different kinds of givings with different levels of harvest allocated to them. Let me just run down. I may not have the time to explain them. Our time is already spent. Forgive me. We have what we call the worship offering. According to Deuteronomy 16, 16, the Bible says to not come before him empty. I'm trying to run very quickly. So there is what we call the worship offering. That when you come before God, it is not a compulsion. It's out of revelation that you should not come to the house of God empty. Based on revelation as proof of your love for him. So there is the worship offering. Number two, there is what we call kingdom investments. This is one of the major giving platforms that fulfills the spiritual law of wealth and abundance Haggai chapter 1 I believe am I right on that? yes when you read from verse 2 and 3 Haggai the prophet was speaking chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3 he says thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying these people say the time is not come the time that the Lord's house should be built verse 3 he says am I right on that? Verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Aha, uh -huh, next verse, let's see. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Kingdom investment. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. It says, Ye have sown much and bring in little. This is the result. Ye eat but have not enough. Ye drink but are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, only earned wages to put it into a bag that has holes. What is the message here? That your, your participation in the Lord's work, you shouldn't wait until there is a call. By the way, there is absolutely nothing wrong in calling people to give, provided the needs are clear, the revelation is there, and it is done within the boundary of integrity. The key word always is integrity. Are we together? There is nothing wrong with a man. I have gone to many places to preach and the people have come together and raised an offering to honor me and I have blessed them and prayed even in my secret place that God will bless them. There are times that the, the, the Lord, a church can agree together and put resources together and say, look, come and sow. We've done this as a ministry and I'm sure that we'll still do it as the days come. Soon we're going to be looking at our building project and God will grant us that grace. So there is nothing wrong. The key word is integrity and truth. Are we blessed? Kingdom investments. There are others like seed faith. Connecting your seed and your, your faith through a seed for a desired expectation. It's based on the principle of resurrection. The Bible says that every seed can die. And that not only do you reap what you sow. God is able to give your seed another body. You can sow shame and reap joy. You can use your seed to kill negative seasons in your life. I have taught this. The principle of seed faith is based on the principle of resurrection. The same way the old heaven and the old earth can pass away. You can use a seed and take a season that you don't like out of your life. You can tie it by faith. This is why it is dangerous to steal money in church. Because that money you see is only a tray. There are people putting courses on it. Putting all kinds of yoke seasons that they want out of their life. When you steal money from church, you don't allow the seed to die. Ask Gehazi and Naaman. Just because leprosy left Naaman did not mean it went away. It was waiting. And a man used a seed to bring it back to his life. I have used this as a principle 
There are many people who have used the principle of seed faith. There are others like prophet offering. When I said it during the school of ministry, the students were laughing. Prophet's offering. Because that one has brought a lot of trouble. You know, we men of God, sometimes because we need money, we drum the issue of prophet offering. But the truth is that prophet offering is true. You can actually use a seed ethically. I, I, I wish I'm not the one who has to say this. But generally, according to scripture, you should not really go to meet a man empty-handed. It is scriptural, but it's just that those who have taught it, have taught it, with, they've robbed in all kinds of biases that makes it to look untrue. But it is true. As much as possible, it's a kingdom culture you should learn. Especially a man of God who has labored obviously in word and doctrine. As much as possible. This is not to make you uncomfortable in any way here. But I am telling you, I owe you to teach you the truth. I have never gone to meet any man of God. In fact, in principle, it is not my culture to meet people and not sow into their lives. Then there is sowing to parents, both spiritual and physical, that attracts patriarchal blessings. These are different levels of giving. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. These are principles. There is the principle of first fruit that has largely been misunderstood in, in many circles, respectfully speaking. But I believe that principle is valid and again within the boundary of revelation and truth, that principle can be engaged. There are many others, sacrifice, vows. So all of these are there. But let me tell you, there are three that I know by revelation and by scripture that are directly related to the lifting of men. One is kingdom investments. Being act, an active participant in the work of the kingdom. Number two, prophet's offering. If done with revelation and understanding, you can sow into an anointing that will lift you in a way that will surprise you. God gave gifts to men. And these gifts did not come empty. And then number three, seed faith. Where you can tie an expectation to end seasons and open others. These three I have practiced in my life. And have revealed to many who have practiced this ministry. Has practiced this. Kingdom investments, prophets offering. And seed faith. Lend me five minutes. Let's wrap up. Please write this. The return channels. There are return channels. When you practice the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance, certain things begin to happen in your life. There are three principal ways that God answers to you as touching your obedience to spiritual laws. Three return channels. Are you ready? Number one, favor with God and men. This is the first return channel to the saints. If and when they practice this, favor is powerful. The proof of favor is not just money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of kings. Access to the hearts of men. Favor is programmable. Number two, wisdom. The second return channel that comes to you on account of activating these spiritual laws. Ah, my God. Somebody's life is changing. Oh, Oh 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 You are amazing You are amazing You're so amazing You are amazing Listen this is the song you will start singing you know because listen the kind of favor that will come next when it starts coming don't tell lies and say you don't know what you did it is explainable hmm. Hmm. the songs of joy so the first return channel favor what is favor men willing to participate in your success men Every time men wait for my teaching, the gift of men. Oh, I have it. There's a teaching that is coming. The Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of? Here's how I read that scripture. What is in man? What did you hide in man that men are not seeing? What did you hide in man? Opportunities. What did you hide in man? Anointings. What did you hide in man? Track records. It's all hidden in men. 
Please do not downplay the place of favor. Every time you touch your pocket and you see money, generally speaking, there are only two ways money comes into your hand. Favor and value. We are coming there. Only. The favor of God is powerful. You can sleep in the prison one night and wake up a prime minister because favor was upon you. Can I tell you, many of us who are trusting God for land and structural establishment, above and beyond savings, it is the favor of God that gives men land. Psalms 44 verse 3. I can tell you, God can favor you into establishment. Read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, go. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thine arm, the light of thy countenance. Why? Because thou hast a favor unto them. When favor is upon you, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind person. Because the moment they can see you is a charm-like force of attraction that compels men to participate in your success. Believe me, I know what I am saying. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Even the king, verse 17, could not reject her. The Bible says the king loved Esther above all the women. She obtained grace and favor in his sight. He set a royal crown on her hand and made her to be queen instead of Vashti. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 21. It has become an anthem here in Koinonia. May that work in your life. And I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of everyone in Abuja and Nigeria and anywhere. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Emptiness has an explanation. It means the favor of God is not at work in your life. You don't do bold face for favor. If it is not there, it is honestly not there. When favor is there, it speaks immediately. When the favor of God is on you, even a fish will swallow coin for your sake and come and bring it near you. Can a fish bite coin? But not when the master has need of it. Somebody will drop a donkey at the middle of the road and keep it for you there. Say, lose that coat. If they ask you, say the master had need of it. A coat that no man had ridden. Why? Because he increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Number two is wisdom. Wisdom has five dimensions, but two of them are most important when it has to do with wealth. Divine direction and divine strategies. These are the dimension of wisdom required for wealth. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Elihu said in chapter 2 and verse 8 of Job, he said, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty maketh men of understanding. When you read Job chapter 29, the first four verses, Job began to give us the secret of his financial exploits. And he says, oh, that I was in the days of my youth. He says, when God preserved me, verse 3, he says, when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness. And now he begins to list all the things that happened to him. The young men saw him and stood up. The old men refrained from talking. Princes saw him, they bowed. Everybody say wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. It says, does not wisdom cry. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice, the Bible says. With me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. There is a relationship between wisdom and wealth. Number three. The third key is the blessing. The blessing. What the Bible calls the blessing. The activation of the blessing in your life. Business people have called this all kinds of names. They've called it the law of attraction. They've called it all kinds of things. We call it in the kingdom, the blessing. The blessing is a very powerful spiritual quality that functions like a magnet. It has an assignment of attracting to your life people, opportunities, and resources. The blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that rests upon a believer. Activated by engaging these principles. The assignment to bring to your life. Listen to me. If I throw nails here. Please look up. We are wrapping up Koinonia. If I throw metallic nails here. Think how laborious it will be to pick all of them one by one. All I need to do is to bring a serious magnet. And just run it round. And every one of it will come. That magnetic property. Men can exhibit it. Are we together now? 
please believe what I'm telling you. That you can be in a city where it looks like everybody is a giver. It just depends on what is on you. The same person who will refuse to give you will carry one million and tell somebody, can I have the privilege of honoring you? So is that person greedy? It's just relative to what is on you. You can step into a city and every good thing begins to gravitate towards you. Again, resources, both human and material, opportunities. There are people, it's only when good things want to happen that you just suddenly find them there. They didn't just come there. There is a grace called the blessing. It draws them there. Are we together? And this is what is coming on someone. Just You sat down in this. It's not just a lecture you have been receiving, ladies and gentlemen. You will leave this place and suddenly someone who did not call you for three, four years. You see 20 missed calls. And you are wondering why. Don't, no, I'm giving perspective to your experiences. So that you don't just thank God in ignorance. You know the name of what happened to you. Then you can help others grow too. Can I be honest with you? I prayed these things in my life. Because I knew that without these things, ministry will be... It will be as if God didn't send you. You know what it means to do ministry in this city. Without this revelation, you are in trouble. Except if you want to serve Satan or go to an idol. Apostle, I came from a background where no one has risen in our family, economically speaking. We all love Jesus, but it looks like nothing seems to happen. I bring you a word of hope. In this kingdom, we know that there is hope for a tree. What I've taught you now has nothing to do with being a preacher, being a businessman. We have not even this. You see that we've not mentioned anything business. Let me tell you this. When you engage, the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the arrival of financial resources in your life. Then the physical laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the management and the multiplication of financial resources. Are you seeing the roles that they play? When you are looking for financial resources, it is engaging the spiritual laws that bring them to your life. Then when they now come, if the only thing you know are the spiritual laws, you will keep having momentary breakthroughs, one testimony, and then you have another one next year. Everything God gives, gives man, he gives, he simulates that operation and plants in it the principle for continuity. It is called the ability to re replenish you cannot be wealthy if you are only fruitful you must sustain the ability to replenish hallelujah please hear me you may have come from a background where the whole family was in a room with rain leaking and yet in your dreams and your visions you see yourself standing before nations feeding nations Funding the work of the kingdom. Building churches single-handedly. The way out is not just to do business. Before business. The way out is not just investments. Believe me when I tell you this. The way out is not just a job. The first principle is this revelation. All wealth comes from God. And belongs to Him. All wealth comes from God. It will reach me from men. Or through men. To me. And that the wealth and the abundance in this kingdom, I'm only given stewardship over it. Therefore, I remain humble and grateful. And then you understand that the kingdom is founded on laws, not superstition. This is where Africa keeps getting cheated. Does God perform miracles? I believe that absolutely. Does God perform financial miracles? Absolutely. But he has set in motion a principle and tied it to the earth. It will not change. Absolute surrender. The law of the tithe. The law of open heavens. The law of giving. And you release this tree. Favor comes for you. Wisdom comes for you. The blessing that is already upon you is activated through your obedience to these laws. And all of a sudden, financial resources begin to come to you. One man coming as sent by God can hold your hands. And you can climb a ladder that took people 10 years, literally, in one day. It took 430 years to be in captivity. But ladies and gentlemen, it did not even take up to one day. That night, could not the king sleep. 
And then he drove them out and gave them gold and gave them silver and gave them everything. They left with joy and honor and dignity. How about Mordecai? That night could not King Ahasuerus sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. When they opened it, who is in the chamber there? And it was that beast called Haman. He said, what should be done to such a, a, such a man? And Haman thought he was himself. So he gave the best recommendation. God knows how to lift you. Yours is to trust him and just to obey. Please rise up on your feet. Please rise up on your feet. Participate in this prayer for the next two minutes. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. It's a prophetic word for someone. You're on your way to better days. Regardless of your background. You're on your way to better days. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better days. Take a sight in one minute to yourself. Status is changing. Slow more decline. You're on your way to better days. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. There's only one prayer point for tonight. And then I make the altar call and we're done. One prayer point. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Please lift your voice and obtain the grace to do. 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 Are you praying? The grace to do. Shalika parus katebelekata. Shande malas katebahasku brandikatala. The grace to do. All the overflows. Are you praying? Following online, are you praying? I obtain the grace to study this afresh. The grace to understand. Indeed, in this season, in addition to all that He's given me, He grants unto me the power to get well through knowledge, through sound exegesis of the truth. Someone is praying. Days of delay come to an end. Days of financial retrogression come to an end. Regardless my background, regardless my past, I find a new path to a glorious destiny. I believe that you have watched and listened to the message of the Lord through the mouth of His servant. I want you to believe every word and declaration and prayer that was uttered. And that word that God speaks to your heart, while listening to it, put them into art, put them to practice and live by the word of the Lord and live a faithful Christian life and prepare yourself for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom and remain blessed. Subscribe to this channel. God bless you.